Uh, Jeremy, welcome to Wickham Wanderers. Thank Tell you, us Phil. a bit about yourself. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for the welcome. Um, yeah, so I've been involved with academy football for the past 15 years. Um, if I'm rewinding all the way back, I actually started at Crystal Palace uh, as a pre-academy coach. So uh, the, the sort of local club to me down there, and I had my own coaching company as well. I was a bit of a jack of all trades. Um, and as that was going on, I became involved with AFC Wimbledon, who we, uh, we were all down there yesterday. Um, and at the time, AFC Wimbledon were obviously non-league, and it was a very grassroots youth setup um, with parent managers and kids turning up in Chelsea shirts and Arsenal shirts and all the like of it. And we went on a journey, me and a few other people as well, of professionalising the academy. So we went from, I don't know, 2008 uh, through to 2011, developing it as a grassroots setup. Um, and in 2011, the club got promoted via the playoffs against Luton. Uh, and I was there until 2019 in a few different roles, but ultimately for academy manager for six years. Um, and yeah, immensely proud of that work that we did at the, at the club there. It was four players that were on the pitch yesterday that were part of the academy when I was still involved. Um, I then decided that I needed to go and uh, broaden my horizons and see some new things. And uh, I went to West Ham for a few seasons. Um, that was a COVID year, so it was a little bit a little bit trickier, but I was able then to experience Cat One environments and Premier League clubs, which was really, you know, it, it took my learning on a, a different um, direction uh, and a really positive one. From there, um, I've done a few different bits. I've worked at the Premier League more recently. I've worked at Brighton and Hove Albion in women's and girls football, which is again, very different. And I suppose the thing that I've always been looking for is a project. That's always what I've, what I've got my teeth into. And that's what Wimbledon was at the time. It was a real project, a real blank piece of paper. So it leads me to today, which is, you know, being here at Wickham. And, and essentially that was, you know, what Dan and Mikhail and Edward pitched me. It was, here's a project, here's a blank piece of paper. We want to go from nothing to something pretty, you know, ambitious. And it was an easy decision for me. I mean, how exciting is it to be in this position to build uh, what we've been told will be a leading high performance academy from the ground up? I mean, that sounds incredibly exciting. It is. It's hugely exciting. Um, and it's why I'm here, because I think I've, I've got to a point in my career now where I've, I've seen the, the full range of youth development setups and academies and um, I've got quite a clear idea and vision in my head, which I think is aligned to, to what the owners want as well in terms of how to run a high performance academy. What we want to try and avoid is um, just being doing the same as what everyone else does. I think innovation is going to be a real core pillar to what we do. And therefore, because there is nothing here at the moment, we're obviously in a privileged position to be able to really think deeply around how we design it and how we build it out. And that's going to be something that's unique and something that I think can stand us out from a crowd, attract talented staff, attract talented players. Uh, and I think that will set us on the course for being different and that, that high performing academy that you talked about. And I suppose the only thing to, to mention on that is that it's, it's certainly not an overnight journey. It's going to be, it is going to be a long road and it is certainly a project and uh, we're in it for the long haul. And that's what academy is, right? Like we're trying to take nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds through to 18, 19, 20 year olds. And that's, that's a big cycle there. So it's, um, yeah, we're, we're playing the long game with it. We're here to try and support the, the club's medium and long-term ambitions. Yeah, speaking to the fans at Adams Park last Saturday, people very excited about the reintroduction of the academy. Mm. And it is about now telling people it is a long-term process. Mm. Uh, just how long does it take? And, sure. and, and what are the, the key sort of milestones that we have to achieve? Yeah, that's a good, great question. I think, um, in any high performing environment, I think like establishing core values and culture is critical. And that was one thing that I knew about this club already from people that I've worked with and, and being around football for so long that it, it's got that, it's got the heritage, it's got the culture, it kind of got, there's, a, there's an identity there that's well defined. And I think that's the first thing that we're probably going to be anchoring ourselves to, to try and make sure we know exactly who we are. And then I think we set about going on a bit of a journey and, and the, the vision for that will be to eventually become a category one academy. Um, again, you don't go from nothing to category one in a season or even two seasons or even three seasons. So we're looking beyond that. We're currently working with the EFL, uh, with the Premier League uh, as well, and obviously internally to try and set, set about a roadmap to get to category one. Um, the milestones along the way, essentially, if you think of it like uh, schools, you mentioned it to me earlier, Phil, but it is like there's an offstead every year to allow you to jump through the different categories. And each category you go through, you're going to need to add more staff to, to it as we go from, let's say, Cat 4 or Cat 3 to Cat 2, then to Cat 1. There's, there's going to be more full-time staff, more part-time staff. 
Um, facilities and infrastructure will need to, to, to grow in line with the requirements because when they come in and audit us, they're going to have a tick list of things that make us compliant with the rules, safe to operate, but then they also look at your standards as well. So the, the, the last bit of that is how well have we embedded our programs, our policies, our football philosophy, experts come in and they, they go, okay, yeah, that, that's where you're at with that now. You're, you're, you're good, you're adequate, you're very good, whatever else it might be. So those will be the, the, the milestones, um, facilities, staff, and, and embedding your programs and processes. Those are the three big hitters. Uh, infrastructure's a big word as well. We've moved yeah. to Harlington recently for, for the first team as well, but this will be key to the academy as well. What can we expect to see in terms of infrastructure to support the academy? Yeah, I mean, I've obviously walked in uh, on Monday and we're already at Harlington and that's amazing because it's Harlington's got a, a great footprint and great bones already to support us. Um, I think if we were to magic up a Category 3 academy right now, we'd be good to go at Harlington and that's a really good, healthy position to be in. To get to Category 2, um, there isn't much more needed other than probably a little bit more office space to, to home a few more staff uh, and the, the big one would be a dome over, you have to have an indoor facility. So that'd be um, you know planning permission and then trying to put that on site. And I know there's, there's already thoughts and plans that are underfoot for that already, which is amazing for me to be able to, to walk into. Um, yeah, and, and you know we've got 18 pitches out here, which is incredible. There, there aren't too many football clubs with the ambitions that we've got that have already got that ready to go. So we're in a good position already. It's really healthy. And the, the geographical position of Harlington as well, yes, uh, yeah. it's on public transport, uh, it's links into London, it's not too far from Wickham as well. Mm. Is that a really good point too? It, fantastic. And funny enough, when I was first meeting Mikel and, and uh, Dan and the owners, one of the things that I was putting forward before I knew about Harlington was actually like, if we've got the opportunity to think about where we can locate the academy, then can we be closer to London? Because the catchment area is fantastic. There are, you know, uh, every club in the pyramid wants talent from London and there is enough of it out there as well. So, you know, I've grown up in London and, and Dan has worked in London for many years as well. So we've got good contacts, we've got good network already. Um, being able to allow the talent to have access to this place, which we're on the M25, the M4, we've got the train line, we've got the Elizabeth line not a million miles away. Um, we're, you know, we're in a good position to be able to get talent to us for sure. So that's, that's hugely exciting. And I think we've got to be, um, you know, we've got to be targeted first and foremost, because we're going to have, as soon as we open the doors, we're going to have a lot of talent that wants to come and be here. And I think we, again, going back to my original point, we need to know what we want, who we want, and be targeted around the type of profile that's going to eventually, hopefully, make it into our first team. And, and therefore, then we can be a bit more targeted about our approach to, to recruitment. Uh, and, and finally, the, uh, the fans love to see players they call them one of our own. They, sure. We see it across football, but Wickham fans are no different to this. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel, uh, in your experience of working through football, when you've, when you've seen someone, identified them, developed them, and then seeing them on the pitch mm. doing the business? How does that feel for you? Yeah, it's, um, I think every youth developer is, is after that buzz, right? It's, it's going to the games on the Saturday and seeing them cross that line. That's what we're preparing them for from nine years old all the way through. Uh, and so that's a huge moment and that's where if and when those things happen we need to pat, pat people on the back and celebrate those moments. Um, I think from a fan point of view the links to that is that we're really, you know, like I said earlier, we've got a great heritage here, we've got a great culture and we want every young person that hopefully eventually makes it onto that pitch at Adams Park to know that and understand it and carry that with them and therefore be more identifiable to the fans. Um, I think that's that's a super strength and in football sometimes, in the modern day of football, that can be a little bit lost. So that's something we'll go after as well with developing our own players is making sure they understand the fabric of this club. That, that's going to be hugely important. Um, but equally, like anyone who's doing their, their job well in academy world this day, like not everyone's going to make it onto the pitch at Adams Park, right? So we need to be really proud and really championing all those other success stories that go on whether they're looped back into our own program, coaching or doing jobs like yourselves, uh, whether it's going on to university or, or playing abroad, whatever else it might be, but we want to make sure that we're enriching lives. That's one of, going to be one of our key pillars. How do we enrich young people's lives? Um, and that'll be hopefully to help them earn a living out of football and hopefully for Wickham, but there'll be many, many other routes that we'll celebrate as well.